Good afternoon everyone. Thank you for joining me for this video where we now clarify and further formalize this whole concept about series, particularly looking at convergence and divergence of a series. Quickly, the difference between a sequence and a series. Look right here what I'm doing. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. That right there is a sequence of terms because you have a defined order of quantities, each differing from the other by means of a fixed item or a fixed pattern. That's a sequence. Now look at these same numbers that I'm bringing up right over here. The difference between a sequence and a series is this. A series will be the sum of those terms of a sequence. You see how you have a comma here in terms of the sequence, but when you're talking about series, you start doing this, their sums. That right there defines this difference between a series and a sequence. But many students or many teachers interchangeably use these, however correct or incorrect that might be. But this right here represents a good difference between these two terms. Series is a sequence but in terms of their sum. When we're talking about convergence and divergence we need to pay special attention to this fact. When you have convergence the sum of those numbers, whatever you might be going into, especially when you're looking at something like this, the sum of the terms in terms of from the very first up to the infinity placed into that function or whatever it might be. Here in terms of a convergence you'll have a finite value which is a clear finite value that's convergence. In a divergence scenario, you're going to end up here in terms of a total sum equaling an infinity. That represents in the very clear basic sense the difference between convergence and divergence. You need to understand this difference by means of a very good example which I will present to you in this video. Our particular interest is in the fact we're looking at an infinite series, especially an infinite geometric series. Look at these, what I'm doing. I have one, three, I have nine, I have 27, I have 81. That's a sequence right here, but we will talk about series because when you start bringing the plus sign, you've converted the sequence into a series going all the way up to here up to an infinity. Contrast this with what you see over here. 1, 1 over 3, 1 over 9, 1 over 27, 1 over 81, all the way up to 1 over infinity. These are both sequences, but they both can play into a series if you start looking at their sums. When you're looking at this, what's the common ratio? Take the first, take a number and the number before it, divide them. 9 divided by 3, 27 divided by 9, 81 divided by 27. Here the common ratio is 3. Do the same thing over here. What's the common ratio over here? Take 1 over 9 divided by 1 over 3. You'll have 1 over 9 times 3 over 1. You'll have 1 over 3. Here your common ratio is a fraction. Here your common ratio is a whole number. Think back to what I said not too long ago in a video. This particular case, which you will remember as I put it down, common ratio in terms of an absolute value less than one, you'll have convergence and or you can use that formula I've shown you. The sum is equal to your first term, one minus r. In the instance where you have something like this, you will see divergence. This right over here is going to equal to infinity and there's no point in you even looking at that formula. Here we see this case, here we see that case. Independently looking at these, let's remember this Sn, this formula which I showed you not too long, 1 minus r to the power of n over 1 minus r. When this was taken to that limit, n approaching infinity, you know you got this formula right here. This was equal to a1 over 1 minus r for the convergent cases. Let's look at this formula right here with regards to this sequence, which will be understood now in terms of a series because we're looking at the sum of these sequential numbers. In the very formalized sense, without using the shortcut, this is what we're looking at. Your first term here is a 1. You're multiplying it by 1 minus r. You 1 over 3 to the power of n. What's n? n is exactly this, which is exactly this, to the power of infinity, divided by 1 minus 1 over 3. The result would be the same exactly if you looked at it in this abbreviated shorthand formula. But we're looking at it here in the long formula. Whenever you see something like this, for this particular item, you just do 1 over 3 to the power of infinity. You're looking at a fractional number to the power of infinity, it will always equal zero. The limiting value of this particular quantity is zero. You'll have one over one minus one over three. You'll have one over two or three. When you do this, you'll have three over two. The sum of this sequence, one plus one over three, which is now being viewed as a series, all of these numbers sequentially adding will be three over two. Not a very large number, it's 1.5. If you ran it through right here, you get three over two. 
your first term is a 1, your value here is 1 minus 1 over 3, you're getting 1 divided by 2 over 3, which flips around to give you exactly that. This sequence, which is now represented here in terms of a series by the plus signs, is equal to 3 over 2, it's convergent. It's convergent simply because of this fact right here, your R value was a value less than 1. When you did the sum of all of these sequence numbers, or in this sequence, the sum of all the sequential numbers, you get a very finite good value. Initially, you have a large gain in the sum, but very quickly and very early on, these sums are so minusculely small that they add very little to the grand total. And in the end, you just have a total sum of this infinite geometric sequence to be 3 over 2. And now, let's erase this because you've seen it and focus on this top one right here. We know simply by looking at the top, this right here is greater than or equal to 1, we'll have divergence. And there's really no need to do it because we know this is equal to this. But I'm going to show you, just for the purpose of this video, you know the formula is this, 1 minus r to the power of n over 1 minus r. You don't want to use this formula now, which is a1 over 1 minus r, which you determine from the limit application because this is only for convergent cases. If you want to do anything here, which is irrelevant, but if you want to do anything, you have to use this formula. Your first term is a 1. Your common ratio is a 3. You're seeing 1 minus 3 to the power of infinity divided by 1 minus 3. You're seeing here 1 times 1 minus infinity. 3 to the power of infinity. Do it on your calculator, you'll get an infinity divided by minus 2. Here you're getting on this top part a minus infinity. Here you're getting a minus 2. Well, the minuses can cancel out. Infinity divided by 2, infinity. So the sum of this particular sequence, which now we'll view it as an infinite geometric series because of the plus signs, is equal to infinity because the common ratio is larger than or equal to 1. Hence, this factor over here will always become infinity, a negative infinity, which will always cancel out with the negative generated from the denominator. But in the end result, your sum of that series, infinite geometric series, will always be infinity and you'll have a clear case of divergence. So remember very clearly the distinction between convergence and divergence. These are simple cases, but then there are cases where you can do the tests for convergence given a series which may look like one way to see if it indeed will behave that way or it will deviate into a particular other way. Then there are tests we have to learn. But here we're looking at just the clear difference between convergence and divergence. You should also remember again the difference between a sequence and a series. Sequence is a defined set of terms which are a listing of those terms and itemization. When you're talking about a series, you're bringing that into terms of a sum of that sequence. Thank you for joining. Have a good day.